The tower raid is back in Dying Light 2 and it is a challenge. The moment people started playing it, they realized it was not like the beta. It's a lot more difficult, there's a lot more things to understand, and if you're playing solo, it is almost impossible. Which is why in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you should do and how you can complete the tower raid. Now before I continue, I'd like to ask guys to please leave a like on this video and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. And hit that notification because I will be streaming the tower raid every single day until the event is over. So I hope to see you guys during the streams. Now the first thing you should do, in my opinion, is set your difficulty to easy. Because even on easy, this tower raid mission is extremely difficult. Next you want to make sure you have some bounties active. The reason why is because every time you rank up, you get a token that you can use in the raid perks section to upgrade your character. And if you do not have these perks, it's going to make playing this tower raid that much more intense and that much more stressful. So make sure you have all the bounties that you can do active. Now a neat trick you can do if you're on console, PlayStation or Xbox, is to head over to your date and time and change it manually, skipping forward a day or a week to refresh the challenges. You can refresh the challenges so that you don't have to do a bounty that you don't like or are unable to do, or simply refresh them so that you don't have to wait a day or a week to do another bounty. Being able to do this will actually help you complete the tower raid that much faster. Now next up is using the right session perk. There are five total perks, and the best one in my opinion is this one, the insatiable. This grants you a 25% increase in the chance of actually getting a positive modifier for the floor. Now the reason why I think this is the best one is because every time I do a run, the modifier is what affects me the most. A modifier can affect your flow and your strategy, but it could also get you killed fairly quickly. Like if you have a very bad modifier, like not being able to use boosters or the enemy deals like 50% more damage, it'll just screw over your chances of actually completing the tower. So in my opinion, it's best to use this one. You could also use reincarnation if you want, but I prefer to stick with this one. Now next up we have the operators. There are four total operators that you can choose from, and all of them are good except for this one, the Von Aiden one. If you're doing a solo play, then this thing is completely useless. Like the only reason you would ever use this is if you were in a full squad and you couldn't pick anything else. So just a simple tip, do not use this one. These other three are the best ones you can use, and my favorite has got to be the pirate. It's just more useful, it's got better stuff, although the other two are good in their own way. Like the Scarecrow, for example, has regeneration boosters that you can use, which are very valuable, but also has decoys that'll distract the Horde of Infected, which trust me is very important in this tower raid, and paired with the Molotov, makes him a formidable opponent. Now the Plague has got to be my second favorite, mainly because of his weapon, but also because of his Rage Booster. Now the Rage Booster allows you to deal 100% more damage, and also gives you a very high resistance to damage. It doesn't show how much, and doesn't say how much, but it is a lot and can help you out in more than one way. Not only could this help you survive a lot longer, but you can also use it to push the cupboards in some of the floors. Like whenever I use this booster and then try to push the cupboard, the infected could not interrupt the animation. So this could be good if you're trying to speed run or your friends are killing infected and you just want to make sure you don't get hit. Now for the pirate, overall he's got a lot of good stuff, but the most useful one in my opinion is this gun. The cool thing about this gun is that you can destroy chargers. Like if a charger is right in front of you, you can shoot them and they'll fall down, allowing you to get behind them and hit them. You don't even have to be behind them to shoot them. Just shoot them right in front and they'll fall. So it makes dealing with chargers extremely easy. Now after you start the tower raid, make sure you head over to the bathrooms and get all the scrap. And the bathroom has so much that you can actually get a good start to the tower raid. And if your friends have the better gear, you can give them the scrap to get a head start. Now a few tips whenever you're doing certain rooms or certain floors is to try and complete them as fast as possible. Because when you get to the end, like where it says floor completed, you can then head back to the floor that you're just on and be able to loot without Infected having to kill you. The Infected will stop spawning, but of course the Infected you didn't kill will still be there. So you don't have to worry about missing out on loot. Now another tip is that when you're doing this boss fight with a demolisher, after you kill him and get the key card and then activate the door, you have to wait 3 minutes before he can go through. Now instead of running around and wasting all of your med kits, medicine, and equipment, follow the route that I'm taking and then hide in this spot right here. The infected can't get you and you'll be safe until the timer runs out. This is a very useful tip to know and can actually help you complete the tower raid. Now the last tip I have is to use the crowd runner skill. In the recent update they actually fixed the crowd runner, making it work as we all wanted it to. Instead of running and then coming to a stop when an infected gets in front of you, you actually push through the infected and don't lose any momentum. So you can pretty much use this to get through the virals that come after you. Now that's it for the video. If you guys found it useful, please leave a like. And if you want to check out more useful videos like this, check out this playlist right here. 
It has all of my best Dying Light 2 videos and can help you become the best player in Dying Light 2. But once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.